Hi everybody, um, I'm Curtis, what's up? I wanted to do a really quick video just to sort of um, go through my free trade journey so far. I've been using the app for about three months and um, I wanted to sort of share with you my progress and also um, give a bit of insight into why I've selected the stocks that I have selected um, and also learn from you guys and if there's any advice or encouragement that I can have a better portfolio or if I could um, help answer any questions with you guys, just to sort of meet some like-minded people. Um, so yeah, I've joined Free Trade around December, I think December the 12th to be precise. And the reason why I joined Free Trade was not only because um, of the value proposition of zero fee investing, but I really wanted to actually find an application, a product or service that I could trust with sort of long-term growth stocks. My sort of medium long term period that I'm looking at at the moment for the stocks that I've selected is sort of one to three years. I know one year isn't really long term, but probably more geared towards the three year mark. Um, and then I will re-review the stocks that I've chosen at that point. Um, maybe sell, maybe continue, depending on how they're performing and, and refresh the portfolio at that stage. So I guess it's more a case of the three year point is a, is a sort of review point um, for myself. Um, I've particularly chosen stocks that I believe by that point will give me a minimum of 50% growth in, in what I put in, um, but are also very decent dividend payers at the same time. Um, I've only chosen 10 stocks, um, and the reason being I don't really want to spread myself too thin, but I wanted to choose 10 stocks specifically. Now, if one really, really performs poorly, then obviously I will probably sell and, uh, and replace. Um, but essentially, the, the 10 stocks is because I've looked at a lot of fundamental data from a lot of the stocks that Free Trade provide. And, and these are these are the ones that I feel like give me the best bang for, for my buck. I'm using the dollar cost averaging approach. So I'm effectively putting in um, a sum of money each month around £100 per stock. So around £1,000 a month all in all. But um, I soon noticed after the first... See, with dollar cost averaging, for those that don't know, it's effectively you put the same amount in um, on the same day each month. And effectively what that should do is um, as your stocks go up and down in price, you should be able to mitigate a little bit of the risk of the down um, cycles and actually benefit from, from when it goes down. But also at the same time, um, be able to build wealth over the long, long term. So there is... Um, there is mixed feelings about dollar cost averaging just because, you know, as you, it's a bit counterintuitive, as you expect stocks to, to grow, um, you're effectively potentially buying stocks at a higher price in the future, where the, whereas if you had that money up front, then you'd be buying it at the lowest price and just sort of leaving it. Um, but I'm, I'm contributing on a monthly basis because I don't have the amount that I want to put in, I don't have to have that to put up front um, straight away. Um, but I'm slightly using a modified dollar cost averaging approach. So my approach um, in the way that it differs is that um, after the first month, the stocks that have dropped the most or grown the least, depending on which way you want to look at it, um, I put more, I apportion more of the funds towards. And the stocks that have grown the least, um, I, sorry, grown the most or dropped the least, um, I put less funds. So effectively, the highest performing ones I put less funds in and the lowest performing ones I put more funds in. And that effectively allows me to um, benefit from the dips in prices from the stocks that, you know, drop the most. But the reason why I do that as well is because I believe that all of these stocks will will perform in the long term. So it's just allowing me to sort of get a little bit more bang, bang for my buck. And that's the reason why I've sort of chosen this approach. Um, with the 10 stocks, I've chosen some in housing, in banking, in insurance, um, in mining, and in sort of everyday use, um, and also an investment management firm. So it's quite a diversified portfolio just for, for sort of um, 10 stocks. But I do believe that um, there is the right balance. Now, there were some stocks within the same portfolio, such as housing, that actually um, met my criteria. So Per Simon being one of those. Um, 
but because I didn't want to overexpose into one specific um, industry or sector, I decided against that and actually decided to to diversify. Um, at the moment, three months in, as you can see, I've invested three thousand. Um, the ice of allowance is uh, twenty thousand. So as you can see, I've invested three thousand, seventeen thousand remaining. And so far, my profit is 373.51, which is about, you know, 120, 125 or something a month, which is um, pretty decent. Um, I think next month I'm going to try and put a little bit more in just because usually um, before the sort of um, tax year period, um, stocks tend to have a little bit of a rally. So... Um, just to sort of get in before they kind of spike up, um, I might be able to take advantage um, of that natural growth. So I will probably try and do that. Now, um, and and yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll create a new video and sort of update you on the progress of, 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 of each of them. Now, just to sort of give you a bit of a background into why I've chosen these stocks, and I'll probably do separate videos to go into a bit more detail. Um, I chose the housing stocks um, particularly because um, their their fundamental data, the balance sheets looked really good. They they have limited in they were limited in debt, um, a lot of assets obviously, but one of the key indicators for housing, um, although I know people are concerned from a Brexit standpoint, is looking at their order book. And I think both Barrett and Taylor Wimpy had a very strong order book, which basically means that they booked up. You know, future house purchases, I think up to about 80 or 90 percent for the next sort of 16, sorry, 18 to months to two years. So that's a good indication of, you know, long term revenue coming in, um, especially within the time period that I'm looking at and also um, profit as well. Um, within banks, I chose CYBG, Lloyds and Barclays. Um, CYBG look after Yorkshire and Clydesdale. Um, and they've just paid a dividend, which is the reason why you can see the very small investment of 375 there. Um, but also, um, banking, I think, hasn't been disrupted um, as much as, um, say, well, so there's, there's, there's some industries that have gone through what I consider wholesale disruption. So when you look at Airbnb and Uber, wholesale disruption is, you know, you're on a global scale, your revenues are in the billions, um, and you know you're ready to even be floated. Now with banking, you've got you know Monzo and you've got Revolut, and they're great organisations that I believe in the next sort of three to five years they will be um, wholesale disruptors. But they haven't been adopted obviously as much um, as obviously regular banking. So I do think that there's still growth opportunity within the banking sector, and I do also think that because of the previous crash, I still believe that that the prices are quite. Um, undervalued. So Lloyd's, I bought in originally um, at four, I think it was 48 pence per share and it's sort of now 60 pence per share. Um, and that was in my original Lloyd's investment year at the beginning on the 12th of December. So um, as you can see, they are going and I think Lloyd's will probably double. So I, I expect Lloyd's to go to about one pound 10 pence per share. Um, within the three year period so effectively that will meet my my um 50 percent criteria um quite comfortably um the insurance sector um aviva and legal in general i chose um the insurance industry has gone up um considerably over the last few years in the last year actually it's gone up by about another 12 and a half percent which for such an established industry within the uk that's a phenomenal amount of growth um, especially when you're dealing in the billions and i think in terms of disruption there are some new players coming in trying to do you know innovative things like pay as you go insurance as you know millennials and gen z do have you know different insurance requirements um however i think if these insurance companies you know stay at the forefront of technology find ways to leverage blockchain um and actually adopt some new types of insurance products for those um cohorts and those demographics and actually they're going to stay profitable so i'm i'm quite confident about aviva and legal in general um man group was a was a, i hedged against myself so that effectively is an investment management company i chose them because i wanted to see 
my choices versus an investment management choices and see you know how they differ and how I can sort of learn from them so it was a bit of a, a sort of diversification play for myself and to sort of hedge against my own choices but it did still meet criteria that I felt um worthy over the one to three year period but funny enough it's the only one that's actually not performing as well as the others so far so that doesn't mean I'm smarter than man group I'm definitely not but I think um it 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 goes to show that the criteria that I'm sort of looking at with mine um, seem to be holding up so far. So hopefully that will continue in the long term. Um, I chose Centimin because I do believe getting into commodities is um, a very, very uh, sound investment. However, I think as an infant investor myself, going directly into the commodities market is quite risky. Um, and I think to be able to leverage the experience of you know the management team and the organization of Centimin who um who do mining actually then allow me to um effectively get into gold without having to risk my own exposure as much so um Centimin at the moment is one of the best performing it actually was about 60% growth so far but due to the fact that it's if you look at the graph you can see in the last month look at the trend line and how far it's gone up so the reason why it's diluted down to about 20 percent is because i'm taking a dollar cost averaging approach as i mentioned so in effect um i've been buying at a higher price quite considerably with sentiment therefore um the the percentage growth has gone down from 60 to about 20 percent but um I will still continue with it. I still think in the long term it's going to pay off really, really well. Um, so I think it's one to watch. Um, and then I chose Imperial Bands. I think, you know, although um, I think tobacco obviously is a is a household product that's not going anywhere in the UK anytime soon. Um, obviously, the emergence of e-cigarettes has had great value within the market. But also um, with other regions, you know, in the world, in the Western world, looking at legalizing cannabis i think this is something that imperial brands will leverage in the next sort of one to three years obviously i don't believe the uk will legalize cannabis but imperial brands may have products that they will sell in other regions um that sort of facilitate and leverage that cannabis market which will then you'll still benefit from as an investor so um i think you know i've only got nine shares just because it's quite expensive at 26 um, pounds uh, per share but i still think it's one to watch so yeah, these are my 10 stocks, Taylor Wimpy Barrett, uh, well I don't need to read them, you can see them all, um, and I hope you found that interesting, I hope you found that information useful, a bit of background about me, um, I actively day trade, so I do, I'm, I'm a day trader on another application, um, but again my, my purpose, my use case for, for free trade is more long term growth investing where I don't need to sort of worry about the ins and outs. With day trading, I, I tend to look at obviously technical data, chart, charting data, um, patterns, etc. And I, and I make my choices about what to sort of get in and out of on an intraday basis. Um, I know obviously most investors are either fundamental um, analysts or technical analysts. I would say I'm a bit of both because I do actually believe in both approaches but um, I use them for for sort of different purposes. Um, hopefully I'll do a video next week. Next week I'll probably actually fund a little bit more, as I said. Um, you'll probably see the growth then drop considerably to start with. Um, but then hopefully, you know, it, as more videos go on, you'll see that it will increase. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Um, definitely leave a comment, definitely like, definitely subscribe. Um, engage with me chat with me and you know it'll be good to meet some of you guys and you know talk about your portfolios if there's anything i can learn if there's any questions you've got um then you know um i'm, I'm definitely eager to meet like-minded people so you know all the best of with your portfolio happy investing i wish you all the best and success and i will speak to you soon take care